Hello everyone, I'm William from Huawei. Today I, I'd like to introduce Cloud Native Batch System Kino to you guys. So the talk basically comes up with four parts. The first one is Volcano Brief. Then the new scenarios and that we are exploring this year. After that, we will go through the community updates and also the release. Volcano is started in 2019, targeting on providing the extending Kubernetes and cloud native technologies to the batch computing. The project was donated to CNCF in 2019, and this year we moved to incubation level. Volcano released a feature version every three months. Now the community have around 2.6 thousand GitHub star stars and 640 folks since joining CNCF. We received over 450 contributors from all over the world. From the graph, we can also see that Volcano engage deeply with upstream computing frameworks. So far, we have supported almost all of the mainstream computing framework. For the public adoption, we do get a lot of user, users, especially for people who are running big AI, big data, Gini, transcoding workload on Kubernetes. Here are parts of adopters using Volcano in production environment. Actually, you can see there's very good diversity over the industry. We have adopters from internet companies. Also, there are financial companies, cloud provider, and gene computing related companies. Current, currently, more than 50 companies adopt Volcano in their production environment. As the figure shows, Volcano is not just a scheduler. First of all, Volcano provides some core APIs such as job, queue, and put group on the basis of Kubernetes, which are convenient for defining batch work workloads and controlling the process of resource allocation. Secondly, the Volcano scheduler component provides rich batch scheduling algorithms such as fair share, topology, SRE, preempt, and backfill elastic scheduling to improve the job performance. At the same time, the plugin scheduling framework allow users to define their own customized algorithm. The Volcano controller component consists of three controllers job controller, queue controller, and put group controller. The job controller is used to management the job declaration and life cycle management. And the queue controller provides resource sharing in maintenance scenario, such as queue proportion, queue mean, mean, mean and max capacity. On the nodes, Volcano provides support for heterogeneous hardware such as support such as x86 arm gpu npu etc as well as resource topology and isolation capabilities in the future we will also support queues related related capabilities let's take a look at several typical batch scenarios explored by Volcano community this year. The first one I'd like to introduce is the internet audio and video transcoding scenario. Now with a large number of videos generated, how can we efficiently and accurately perform cloud transcoding and processing to adopt to uh, multiple ter terminals displays needs? Display needs 
and to deal with complex network conditions is the top priority of video industry developers. The basic process of video transcoding is to divide a large video file into many small video files and then perform parallel transcoding through many small tasks and then merge them into a complete video file after transcoding. In this process, three aspects of transcoding speed, video code rate, and video quality must be guaranteed at the same time. Mass video transcoding has very high requirements on the throughput of the system. At the same time, it consumes considerable computing power and is also very cost sensitive. In response to this demand, we have de done two things. First, through the uh, optimization of Kino and Kubernetes, the throughput of scheduler is increased to meet the parallel processing of massive video transcoding tasks. Second, in order to reduce user costs, we collocate online business and offline workloads together in a cluster and at, at the same time oversold some unused resources to improve the uh, utilization of the cluster and, and achieved good results. The second scenario I want to introduce is about AI for science. In the past, new drug research and development had the characteristics of long research cycle, high cost, and low successful read. As a whole direction in the field of drug research and development, AI, AI has been applied to all stages of drug research and development. In recent years, more and more AI drug companies have emerged. And we have also investigated some of the use cases. As shown on the left, this is an AI drug discovery and design platform. And a multiple dependent job from a workflow. The previous job ends and the scientists analyze, analyze the results and then trigger the next job. A job runs for several days and consumes a lot of computing power. When the business reach, reach its peak, it even breaks the upper limit of the resource capacity of a single region and is very sensitive to, co to cost. In these scenarios, the cross-region cross scheduling capability provided by the cloud native technology ensures the capacity demands during the pink business hours. Secondly, for the cost requirements, the basic solution is to use the cloud native platform to provide unified management of multiple computing power and uh, even spot instance to reduce the cost. In addition, the drug companies can also use the container technology to solve the problem of version completion and environment uh, consistency. The third scenario is the traditional HPC. The traditional HPC software ecosystem is not so friendly. The main software such as Slurm, PBS, and HPC Condor are all GPL licensed. On the other hand, the cloud native ecosystem is very friendly, but the batch capability has many shortcomings. Many, mainly in job management and batch scheduling strategy. In response to this situation, CNCF and the Kubernetes established batch work group to define the general batch API for 
for batch. In addition, Volcano has a, a batch computing project of CNCF. It provides a very rich scheduling strategy and job management capabilities, helping the traditional HPC users to gradually migrate their business to the cloud-native environment. In addition to the above three typical scenarios, we also received some of some other new scenarios this year, such as autonomous driving scenarios and IoT scenarios. We will not introduce them one by one today. Next, I will briefly introduce several typical features of Volcano. The first one I'd like to introduce is the job management in Volcano. As you know, the job of Kubernetes can describe one kind of pod in a job, but for most batch workloads, their job in involves multiple types of pod. Take TensorFlow job, for example. It has PS pod for parameter server and uh, has work type of pod executing training tasks. And uh, there are also chief pod for management and even the evaluator pod for cross validation. So the computing framework in different domains are trying to run better on Kubernetes. They developed their operators such as TF operator, Spark operator, Flink operator, MPI operator. Users have to deploy, deploy different kinds of operators in their environment to, to support different framework. It's complex for users to maintain all these operators. People are actually looking for a deeper integration and better support for their, this computing framework. The multiple pod template is supported in Volcano. With the, this feature, Volcano Job is able to unify the support most uh, mainstream computing frameworks like MPI, TensorFlow, Harvard, PyTorch, etc. And also, fine-grained job management is, is implemented in Volcano. Volcano Job also provides an extendable job plugin to allow users to define their customer, customized behavior and uh, provide several built-in plugins by default. Also, the Volcano job and the scheduler can coordinate to do more of optimization for batch workload. For example, the job dependency scheduling and the task dependency. Next, let's go to the resource management. We, we add queue in Volcano for resource planning and sharing. The queue is a cluster scoped concept. It is decoupled with namespace. The queue, the queue is mainly used to share resource between multiple tenants. For example, one queue can map to a group in company and also you can match a specified kind of resource like GPU for this queue in the cluster. And also user is allowed to configure different policy for different queue. It's very useful. After we get to know the queue concept in Volcano, let's talk about some scenarios. The first scenario is if you have to two teams, how to share resource between between them with Q. Here is an example. There are two Q, Q1 and Q2, uh, which are mapping to your two teams. And their weight is two to one. There are six CPUs in cluster and there are six pod in, in Q1. Q2 is empty. So the pods in Q1 can borrow resources from Q2 and all pods get running. And then we submit a job to Q2. 
The scheduler will reclaim two CPUs from Q1 to keep the ratio as 2 to 1. As a new job in Q2, get, run, get two CPUs and get running. The second scenario is for some users, they, can, they have routine jobs or urgent jobs. They want to reserve amount of resources for, them, for this kind of job. For this case, user can configure the guaranteeing resources to make a reservation in, 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 in Volcano. Next, a fair share is a common requirement for elastic or streaming jobs like Spark. However, in Kubernetes, the more job submitted, the more possibility to get more resources. There's no fair share. Volcano provides the fair share between jobs and namespaces. From the graph, you can see user 1 and user 2 submit small job and big job to the same queue. The small job might get starving without fair share scheduling, and Volcano ensures big job and small job get the resources fairly with DRF agrees. And also, we add the namespace fair share in Volcano as the graph shows Although the namespace 3 submit more jobs, let's say job 4 and job 5, than namespace 2, but they get the same resources individually. As we mentioned in the first section, there's, there's, there's not enough scheduling policy in Kubernetes for batch workload. We have been spending a lot of time to fill these gaps. Here are parts of the scheduling policies provided in Volcano. I will present, I will, I will present the, some of them. Nowadays, the ML workloads has higher demand for GPU compared to traditionally workload. Tra traditionally workload. GPU is a, is a precious resource. How to improve the GPU utilization is a hot topic and have great value for users. Elastic training can dynamically adjust the number of instances involved in the training, greatly improve the utilization of GPU resources, especially on the public cloud. It can work with spot instance to get a lower cost and improve the training efficiency. First, uh, let's see what's, what Elastic job is like. The, last, the left figure shows a Volcano job. The main available infers to the job has file pod at, at least, and the replicas refers to the job has 10 pod at most. The job get gets running while file pod get alloca allocated. And then the job will extend more pods if there's more, res more free GPU resources. Here is a scenario. As you know, the inference service always has a, a lower GPU utilization compared to the training workload. As people tend to collocate the inference services, with elastic training workload into in one cast to improve the utilization. The red figure shows an example. The inference job two with high priority preempt elastic pod from the training job one to ensure the SRE. Whenever there's free resources available, the job one will extend more pods to ac accelerate its training. The next, the next one is about the SRE. In a real production cluster, users often submit multiple kind of workload in one, class, in one cluster. For example, the small job and the big job. How to avoid the big job or small job get starving is a basic and important 
importantly. The left figure shows an example. At the moment of T1, user submit a big job 1 with gun and a small job 2. A small job get allocated and the big job 1 keep pending due to insufficient resource. At the moment uh, T2, a new small job 3 was submitted get allocated. The big job 1 keep pending due to insufficient resources. With, with the time goes on, the big job will get starving. If, if the re released resources always cannot satisfy its gun, and uh, user submits small job continu continuously, the SLA plugin SLA scheduling allows user to configure the job so that it is completed on time and reduce the risk of missed the deadline. The parameter SLA waiting time is the maximum time that one job should stay in pending. When the SLA waiting time reached, the SLA plugin moved the pending port to the next state and start to reserve resources for this job until the job request is satisfied. Spark is started to provide support for Kubernetes from 2.3 version in 2017. And later, Spark Operator provide another way to help use user to run Spark on Kubernetes as well. However, however, in a long time, Spark on Kubernetes lacks of um, batch scheduling abilities. Uh, late last year, we started to work with Spark contributors to support customized batch scheduler for Spark on Kubernetes. Spark with Volcano provides the batch scheduling abilities like job priority queue, fair share, resource reservation, etc. Now the feature is ready in Spark 3.3 version. Here is the release journey of Volcano. At the very early age, we developed developed a set of scheduling policies to support the batch workload, and then integrate with ecosystems such as Kubeflow, Spark Operator, Flink Operator, Argo, etc. Later, we found that there are a lot of gaps in the job management, so we spent quite a lot of time to enhance the job management to deeply support upstream computing framework. In the future, we are going to support several scenarios like multiple cluster scheduling for batch workload, performance enhancement for big scale cluster, intelligent co collocation for better utilization, and uh, FinOps, etc. Here are some resources of Volcano. You are welcome to join our community and give us your feedback. Thank you for attending this topic. That's all for me. Thank you.